Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite chapters because it talks about oral health and preventive technique. Um, this is why we go to the dentist every six months. We don't go when we're in pain. By the time you're in pain, it's too late. You've got um, a cracked tooth, endo going on. It's gonna be expensive, it's gonna be painful. So a lot of people say, I only go to the dentist when something hurts. But you should be going every six months to the dentist. Uh, what problems could poor dental health cause? It could cause heart disease, um, mouth cancer, diabetes, gum disease, tooth loss, bad breath, dental decay, lung conditions, and strokes. So for someone who has not been to the dentist in a really long time, you can't just go in and do a full mouth cleaning. Um, a lot of times they'll take one quadrant at a time or uh, the upper and then come back for a second visit for the lower. So how to remove dental plaque um, without going to the dentist. What do we use or what should we be using every single day to get corn from out from in between our teeth, chicken, steak, gloss. Uh -huh. gloss. So people should be flossing on a regular basis and that's something that it does take a very specific technique to do. Um, how many of y'all have wrapped floss around and your fingertips turn blue? All right, so we're gonna show you how to do that without having that happen. This will be a big question you get asked. What toothpaste should I use? Anything non-abrasive, because they do, I believe it's uh, Rembrandt that has granules in it, and it can wear down your teeth like erosion. Um, so I always say something non-abrasive and something that contains fluoride, okay? Now, when my kids were little, they did not get crest or anything like that. They got training toothpaste and it did not have fluoride in it because at that age they're going to be swallowing toothpaste. So you really want um, to use, like a lot of times they'll have Paw Patrol or you know whatever popular cartoon is out, Moana, Frozen, you know, and it'll say fluoride free or training toothpaste. And that's what you want to give to the, the little kids that are in training and make it fun for them. Uh, brushing your tongue, a lot of people do not know that every time you brush your teeth, you should be brushing your tongue too. You've seen people stick their tongue out and it looks white like that. It's because there's plaque on it. So you have to brush your tongue. Um, it's that bacteria that grows that makes you have bad breath. So brush the teeth, brush the tongue, rinse and gargle. Um, the teeth should look like this. You might see some spots on it where maybe they had too much fluoride when they were younger um, and it's molted the teeth a tad. But look at the gums, how healthy they are. Um, that, is, that is your goal, that's what you should be seeing. This is gonna be on your midterm. This is called the dental decay formula. And if you have your phones, please take a picture of it. Bacteria plus plaque or well, bacteria is plaque. So plaque plus sugar equals acid. Acid plus tooth equals decay. Sugar plus plaque equals acid. Plus your tooth equals decay. So what types of things are acidic? Sauce. Spaghetti sauce. A lot of people will get um, what they call canker sores or ulcers um, after they eat pizza or spaghetti because down in your vestibules, that sauce, that acid will get stuck and overnight it will call, it'll eat away at your tissue and cause a little sore. So a lot of times after you eat spaghetti, um, people who drink a lot of coffee, coffee's acidic. Um, Coca-Cola, you know, uh, those darker sodas. Um, sometimes they will, their dentist will tell them to kind of swish out with a little bit of baking soda and water, and that'll help kind of neutralize that. But 
just taking regular water and swishing out really good, if you don't have that, is a big help. So sugar, you drink a, a soda, Coca-Cola, it gets on the bacteria, which is your plaque, and it starts to create an acid. Well, all of that stuff's sitting on your teeth, so that acid's now attacking your tooth, creating decay. So this is the dental decay formula, sugar plus plaque equals acid, plus tooth equals decay. This is worth 15 points on your midterm, okay? Everybody got it? All right. So, a lot of people think a tooth is just solid calcium. Um, this is a healthy tooth. It has many layers. So, um, just for this chapter, to keep it simple, you have the outside, which is the enamel. Then underneath the enamel, you have a little bit yellower color, a, a softer part of the tooth called dentin. And then that red part is called the pulp. And that is literally the heart of the tooth. Um, it has blood and tissue and blood vessels running through it. So here, it would actually go in one side of the apex where it enters and then down the other one. The apex is the opening to the root. And so it literally flows through there. You ever been running and it's cold weather and you feel your teeth throb? That's why. Um, that blood has been starting to circulate more. And so when you have the dental decay formula, it starts to attack the enamel. Then it'll start eating down through the dentin. Once it hits that dentin, it's gonna move faster because the enamel is the hard part. Once it hits the red part, the pulp, that's it, game over, okay? Um, that's when the dentist is gonna drill down and gain access to the pulp, clean it out, it'll be empty, and then um, fill it with this plastic material called gutta percha and seal it Put a crown on it maybe and then you're all done so before it reaches the cavity stage you want to go to the dentist get your fluoride treatments get them to do um, you know the, the um, scaler for the cleaning subgingival you know keep all that stuff off your teeth and if you're going every six months they'll catch it when it's a little cavity versus a big cavity does that make sense okay now this is something really cool. Um, we use disclosing agents. Well, if I disclose information to Katie, then I'm telling her something. I'm revealing information to her. So this disclosing agent is a tablet or a liquid that you chew and kind of rinse around in your mouth and spit, or you put one drop on the tongue, roll it around your mouth, and then spit. And anything you see that is dark blue has been there over 24 hours. Ooh. Anything that's like a pink is fresh. It's, it's been there just, you know, six, 12 hours. And so this shows you, well, what do you think it shows you? How dirty they are. How dirty they are? <laughs> <laughs> that is a nasty person. No. Um, they didn't floss. They didn't floss, that's what it's telling me. They certainly did not floss, but what else? They don't take their time brushing. They don't take their time brushing. So this is telling the patient, this is where I need to focus on brushing. So how long should you brush? Two minutes. Any different answers? No. No? <laughs> All right. Two to three minutes, okay? But of course, kids, where do they brush? The front. front the front and I'm all done mommy no you're not so we started a little song with our youngest um, and I actually name the surfaces of the teeth and so we'll go through that together but she loves it because I end with tongue you're done you know so <laughs> anyway she loves it and it works um, patient motivation what motivates you to get up and go to work to get up and go to school. That paycheck. <laughs> a paycheck. So money money motivates a lot of people. But what about what about our students in the room? What motivates you to get up and go to school? Education. A good education. More money. 
more money because of the education. How are you going to motivate somebody to take care of their teeth when they're 12 and they don't see that value? Tell them by the time they're 21, they won't have any teeth. That is true. I've had kids say, that's good. Just pull my teeth and give me dentures. They have no idea what they're asking. Um, so you want to show kids these are healthy teeth. You know, the picture of the disclosing agent, this is where you're missing brushing. Uh, sometimes if they're really bad off, I will give them a little packet and say once a week I want you to use this and catch where, you know, make it fun for them. For your patients, you really need to motivate. They need to know that you care, not just in the office. This would be a great time to send them a postcard and to write them a note, I know you're doing a great job. I can't wait to see you again and check your teeth. Are you using the disclosing agents? Have a great weekend. You know, let them know that you care. It takes what, two minutes to write something down and hand it to the front office and say, hey, could you please mail this out? Um, that's the stuff that not only motivates your patient, but that parent is gonna go tell, you know, two or three people, hey, I love this office, you should go there. Look what they did for my kid. So you're gonna get more patients and more opportunities to make a difference in some kid's life. All right, so here is um, different types of things. Um, you know, we started out with the paste and the little tin can to brush our teeth. Um, here is Tom's Children's All Natural Fluoride Free. They don't use any fluoride in their toothpaste. Everything's all natural. They also have a line of deodorant without aluminum in it. Um, and it's called the difference between deodorant and um, antiperspirant. Who knows? One helps you not sweat, right? Yes. But if it's an antiperspirant, it has aluminum in it. If it's a deodorant, it's just kind of a smell blocker and you'll have to reapply it during the day. So, um, you know, I, I've actually bought that and tried different types of deodorants to see what works best, because everybody has different body chemistry. But the toothpaste, um, I actually prefer the bottom one. Um, I use Aquafresh, triple protection Aquafresh. Um, I like the fluoride in it. Your teeth need fluoride. Just like I talked about, you know, my leg got hurt. Did I come in here with a full body cast? No, because it just needed to be treated on my knee, you know, topically in one, one location. So um, these are the reasons why, you know, we're so against um, the different types of fluoride methods that are used today. And we'll go over that on the whiteboard. If your patient has braces, it is really difficult to brush with a regular toothbrush. They make toothbrushes that have like a V-shape cut in them, but the main area is above the braces and below the braces. They need to angle it and brush. There's also interdental aids um, in different sizes that they can kind of get in there. You don't want patients to use this up around their gum because it's pretty rough and you can wear away your gum and start getting resorption, just like a receding hairline, okay? Um, Listerine, I love Listerine. I use the uh, Cool Mint Fresh, I think is what it's called. Um, but this is the original stuff, that yellow stuff. Try to swish for 30 seconds with that stuff. That's horrible. Oh my goodness. Um, you know, my parents used Scope when I was growing up. It really doesn't do what Listerine does. So, um, but I certainly would never let my, you know, 13 and under try this because it would just light them up. Um, this is what you give kids, you know, the bubblegum flavor. You squeeze it, it fills up the top. Get the real stuff act. We saw what the uh, off brand did to the egg last week. Um, and let's see, there's, uh, there's different fluoride rinses. And it depends on the patient. If, if their mouth, you know, you're looking in their mouth and they come in and it's like, oh my goodness, there's still eggs and sausage stuck up under these braces from two days ago. I've had that happen. 
Um, I'm like, did you have bacon and eggs this morning or sausage and eggs? No, I had it yesterday. Ooh, <laughs> um, that's alarming. So, hey, who brought you today? Mom did. Can you go get mom for me? Okay, mom, I want to show you this. When did you make eggs and sausage? Yesterday. Okay, looks like it, it was good because it's still here. So, <laughs> you want to talk to mom and dad or whoever brought the um, patient in and just go over some, we need some fluoride going on because we don't have good brushing going on. Uh, biotin dry mouth, a lot of times this will be given to patients that have dry mouth, um, patients who are possibly going through uh, chemotherapy and different treatments. So um, if the patient comes in and it's just you and the patient and they're telling you this is bothering me, that's bothering me, make note of that and ask the doctors anything we can do, what would you recommend giving them for their dry mouth, for their excess saliva you know they they they're going on a bunch of job interviews and they're having some issues with excess saliva um, so those are things that you can advocate for the patient to the doctor about how to brush um, there's different motions of mechanics and so you know a lot of people go in a circular motion um, if it's baby teeth you start at the back you go up and then brush down that's really hard for kids to do and so we're going to go over that when we have a model in our hands so we could really go through that together all right now here's some different ways for fluoride treatments uh, this is the old way that we used to do it with the fluoride tray and you fill it a third of the way full what would happen if you filled it all the way full it's going to overflow, it's gonna overflow and the patient's gonna do what? Gag. Gag. <laughs> so you don't want that to happen. Um, so you fill it a third of the way full, so when they bite on that foam tray, it oozes up in between the teeth. It sits on there for one to four minutes. Now, if I've got Ava in the chair, I'll probably get a minute out of her. If I've got a 10-year-old, probably four minutes, depending on the kid. So that is the old way of doing it. The best way, the quickest way, is painting it on there, and that way they're not going to gag. You know, if they're severe gaggery, they might gag, you know, once or twice. But being able to paint it on all, all five surfaces of the teeth is, is just great. This is fluorosis, and so um, this person had some extra fluoride when they were little, when their teeth were developing. And so they kind of look marbly, but they're fine. You know, they're healthy teeth. It just, the discoloring part bothers the patient. So some of the options that we'll give them are, um, in extreme cases, lumineers, uh, veneers, or um, just regular bonding. You know, just putting a surface of bonding over it. So that's up to the dentist and the patient to discuss and uh, decide on. And then dental impressions. Uh, there are lots of different dental impressions. The ones that um, we're going to be doing tonight are the alginate impressions. And you see how you don't see the silver tray. Everything is just engulfed in alginate. That's the way it should look. If the teeth, you see the front of the tray, then you need to move the tray forward so the teeth don't hit it. Um, then you have over to the right the blue and the pink. That is a polyvinyl siloxane impression material. There's lots of different impression materials, and we'll go through each one. But we're going to perfect one before moving on to the other, okay? Then up at the top right, um, you have 3D imaging. That doesn't involve any gooey stuff in your mouth. It's literally a camera, and it goes and it's taking images really fast and popping up on a laptop screen and building this image on the screen to be printed out in 3D later. And you have your model. And so, so many different ways to, um, to get those patients um, impressions nowadays. And a lot of dentists do the, um, the 3D imaging for crowns and things like that now because it's so efficient and fast. So, any questions?